a man growing up with a cane pole in his hand. Like a pool of dreams sitting down by the street that leads him to the corpus bay. Give him a shotgun to please his mind. Give them well a few reasons to fly. Living in the city just ain't for me. I want to go back to the country. Take me to Texas. I want to go down that open road. But take me to Texas. I want to see how far this country goes. But take me to Texas. I want to go down that open road. But take me to Texas. I want to see how far this country goes. From the pheasant up north to the bucks down south, the east and west got them large mouth. Hill country hunting and the Hi folks, TJ Graney, your host for the Texas Outdoor Zone. And today on our show, we got our buddy Bobby Boyd with us again. And we're doing an axis hunt in Uvalde County. Uh, there's a large herd of free ranging. In other words, there's a big herd that roams this area right here, these valleys and these river bottoms. It's all low fenced around here. There's a ton of them. And we just want a couple of them. We'll take we'll take two, and that's uh, that's good enough for me. One of them's good enough for me. <laughs> All right, you don't want to miss this. This is action packed. All right, we moved down here on the river bottom. There's. Uh, crossing right here behind us where those axes come down in the evenings and uh, we're hoping to catch them crossing yeah. out here. Well they've been seeing them so. Yeah they've got a group of about 40 and another group of about 80. So we're going to watch uh, watch both ends of this. We're going to get in this pop-up blind and watch both ends of the river and see if we don't catch them crossing this evening. So uh, I'm excited. Let's get a big bucks too. Big, big bucks. bucks. Big bucks. That's what we want. Big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get in the blind. All right. We ready to go, baby. <laughs> Yeah. Let's get them. Well, now they told us there's some big, big bucks here, so well, the chance of us finding something. Well, we you. saw we saw a tree when we got here. Did, oh, you saw those? Yeah, oh, out in the field. Yeah, it was cool. And you've never hunted an axis? Never hunted an axis. That's you know that's one one animal I've never really been around. You know that much or seen that much. But uh, this is gonna be exciting for me. I know that. So, what have you been doing recently? I mean, uh, just trying to promote my record. You know. Yeah. I got that. Uh, the Ghost of the Alamo is out on, and the radio stations are playing it now, and and it's it's doing pretty good in the indie charts. So, it's off the Honky Tonk Tree CD, and the Ghost of the Alamo. What was that new song that you were? Timber, Timber and Stone? Yeah. What, what, what's... Oh. Well, I hadn't even recorded that. I don't know if I should sing it or not. Well, give, us a, <laughs> give us a couple bars off of it. I oh. really loved it. It's kind of bluegrass, you know. It goes, Timber and Stone Oh, Timber and Stone Build me a house Out of Timber and Stone the house that I created is no longer a home since you left me. It's timber and stone. The rooms all are empty now. The walls are closing in. A voice inside calls out to me. She's not coming back again. There's a hole in this aching heart Filling up with rain As the haunting wind keeps whispering your name Timber and stone Oh, timber and stone Build me a house 
out of timber and stone. The house that I created is no longer a home since you left me. It's timber and stone, timber and stone, oh, timber and stone. That's, that's without that's so without the life that's without the last verse, of course. <laughs> that's gorgeous. I like I really like it. It's, it'll have a lot of bluegrass harmony and stuff like that, you know, mandolin and a fiddle. Well you've been doing a lot of blue Patty Loveless did a bluegrass song. Yeah, she there. did one on the uh uh let's see, what was the name of that album? Uh, that was um, the last Mountain one Soul. Did. Mountain yeah. Soul yeah. album, yeah. She did. That was uh, a big record for her. Yeah, it was a wonderful record too. I think it was some of her best work, you know. And I, yeah, she's just, you know, her bluegrass. I mean, she's from Kentucky anyway, you know, and and her bluegrass is just killer. But uh, let's go hunting, man. <laughs> no more singing, just hunting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate you bringing me down here, TJ. Tell me that after you put that big buck on <laughs> the ground. Stick around, folks. There'll be more on the Texas Outdoor Zone in just a few minutes. This portion of the show brought to you by Country Line Mercantile. While Bobby and I were watching the river, I spotted a lone buck in the pasture behind us at 300 plus yards. We bolted out of the blind to the mesquite trees. Can you see him? Take him if you want. Yeah, but get ready. Don't let him get away, Bobby. I'm not. Just catch my breath. That got him. There he is, he dropped. Right over here. He's dropping. You see him? Don't have to. He's down. Dude. <laughs> All right. My Load, reload. Let's go look. My first act is. Oh, son. Thank you, TJ. Yeah. Thank you, America. <laughs> <laughs> you did a wonderful thing. Yeah. Oh, man. I was shaking. I was shaking I know, so you had, bad. You had to take that I breath. I had to take my breath. Don't let him get away. Don't let him get away. I don't know. That might have been, you know, that's 200, maybe. That's plus. 200 plus. That's yeah. two plus for sure. Even the first shot was two plus. You oh. are an access killer. <laughs> oh, man. Got a song about it, Bobby? Ooh. Oh, what a feeling. Ooh. When that soul went through the ceiling. <laughs> oh. Off into the heaven it did rise. Oh, man. I got to see this. He had a fairly good rack. What a time. What a time. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For this day and this time in my life. There he is, straight ahead. I see him. He's still alive. No. Yeah, he is. I saw him move. You better be reloaded. That's all the shells I oh. had. <laughs> you better be ready to jump on him. 
God, I hate to shoot. No, you just want to be prepared. Okay. Hey boy, you all right? Well folks, this is Bobby's <laughs> first Axis buck. Absolutely beast. I'm telling you, oh, I, I, he liked to never went down. No, that, that first shot seemed to be about, what, maybe 300 yards, yeah. 275. It was a long we shot. Thought maybe that passed over him. He made the fatal mistake of stopping once. You got a perfect shoulder shot and a perfect neck shot right here. I couldn't, he went down and then he got back up. Yeah, I don't understand it. I can't believe it either. That's a, but he's a big bad boy though. He's a beautiful, and the, and the stakes and stuff you're gonna get off of this are just gonna be absolutely oh. awesome. This is a beautiful mount too. TJ, thank you buddy. Hey. Thank you, thank Chris Yeah. and Rick. And all the guys. Uh, folks, Axis hunting year round, uh, just about anywhere in Texas. It's affordable, it's doable. Even Bobby Boyd <laughs> can get an Axis buck. Oh. So stick around, folks. There's a little bit more after this. You don't want to miss it. It's Axis hunting on the Texas Outdoor Zone. Only one place right here. Yeah. Woo! Yes. You grab the back. One, two, three. Animal. That's a big animal. You know, big there you go. Woo. Where's all the sweat? There you go. Sweat full of glory. Good shot, man. <laughs> this portion of the show is brought to you by Country Line Magazine. Now it's time for the Texas Parks and Wildlife Corral. Here at the Houston Food Bank, more than 500 charitable organizations receive thousands of pounds of donated food. Last year, thousands of pounds of venison were donated by Hunters for the Hungry, a program that enables hunters to donate venison to feed hungry Texans. The clients that are apt to use the services of the shelters or the pantries are oftentimes frail elderly, young children, uh, those in which nutrition is most critical and protein is probably one of the most important things and oftentimes the most difficult thing to get donated. Hunters like Alan Bosky have been participating in the Hunters for the Hungry program for years. He donates the game he's taken by first taking it to a processor. If the animals just die off, then it uh, doesn't benefit anybody. To where if we can go ahead and harvest animals and bring them up here, it'll give somebody something to eat. Hunters donate a $20 fee to their processor to help defray costs. The frozen venison is then sent to the local emergency food assistance providers, such as food banks. Edgar Hodge is a worker at the rehab mission in Houston. He also lives here and benefits from Hunters for the Hungry. He's practicing to be a cook, and one dish he's getting good at is venison. Uh, you don't make no plans to end up in a position, you know, where uh, you're dialing out. So when it happened, you kind of figure out how did you get from point A to Z. Last year, venison and other game meat donated through Hunters for the Hungry provided over 200,000 meals for hungry Texans. We take this time to really uh, allow us to build our stores so that in January and February, when people aren't always thinking about the charitable act of giving, that we can continue to, to meet the need of our community. Texas hunters are sending back the message that they care. From Houston, this is Lydia Saldana reporting. There was this one group that came from our left to our right early in the morning and in that group there was one really nice buck and I had a hard time not taking him but I was really hoping that there would be a bigger one come out of the trees where we heard him to our right so we just let these guys wander off. Well folks, it's about 7 o'clock in the morning. We moved the pop-up line back out into the pasture where Bobby shot his 
axis last night and uh, they're in these trees over here this one group of uh, trees and we're hoping they're gonna either cross in front of us or back behind us over here uh, as the morning gets a little bit uh, further along there's turkey all over we've seen some we saw one that was pretty nice and uh, might might should have but didn't um, but we're going to kind of hang out here and watch the morning come up and see what um, what progresses. And hopefully we'll get a shot at a nice axis. Good shot. Well, we've been out here <clears throat> for about an hour and a half and there was this one small group working right here and I was afraid that uh, that they'd go back in. They came out and, and went back in and came out and went back in. But this one buck, he's a really pretty nice one. And uh, so he gave us a side shot and I busted him. I, I think I busted my eye on the scope. I never shoot this gun, never shot this Mauser 270 before. And uh, it wasn't adjusted for me because I just got it. But apparently it's on target. So let's go check this dude out. Well, this is the beast. Perfect shot right in the back. Dropped him in its tr in his tracks. Uh, you know he's probably three years old, maybe two. Not a real old one, um, but these uh, axis out here, are gigantic bodies on them. Beautiful skin, uh, killer mount. Lots of good groceries. Man, that's axis hunting in Texas. Only one place, the Texas Outdoor Zone. You can't beat it. Now we got to load them up. Take him to the camp. Killer. You ready? Yep. One, two, three. Uh, that's some extreme grocery shopping right there. For this portion of the show brought to you by Country Line Mercantile. Well, folks, welcome to the Texas Outdoor Zone. This is the conclusion of a good hunt. Good hunt. A good hunt. We did it, baby. Yep. Uh, Bobby and I, yesterday, we were on the other side of that bluff, and we were relaxing, and you were in your shorts and T-shirt. We were and, in the blind, you know. And and we looked behind us, and there's a lone buck walking a tree line. So uh, we jumped up and ran into the mesquites, yep. and... Uh, he couldn't quite, I don't think, figure out what we were or what we were doing. He, no, he saw us, though, you know, and, and uh, that, well, that was a good thing because he did stop, you know, long enough for me to, to get a, what, a 300-yard shot. Yeah, it was really, really amazing. And then he, he ran away a uh, ways, and then you popped him again, and that dropped him. Mm -hmm. And then walking up on him, he got up again. It's like <laughs> Robo Buck or Robo something. Robo Buck. <laughs> and so, uh, but we got that thing done, and then this morning we were set up in the same pasture, and uh, we saw a buck cross. I saw a buck, a small group cross, and that, the buck that I shot was in there. And I thought, oh, man, if he comes back out, I'm going to have to take him uh, because I was afraid I wouldn't see another one. Yeah. And it turned out to be a nice buck. And uh, so we, we didn't see too many does, though. We, uh, I, didn't, I didn't see any does. Well, we saw, we saw five doe and some small ones. But, uh, I mean, he was the only buck mm -hmm. that I saw. Yeah. I saw some shorthorns, but that was it. But anyway, anyway, enough said. We did the deal. Enough said, yes. So we need to roll into town, drop the meat off, yeah. and uh, call the taxidermist. That's it. All right, folks, thanks for watching today's show. We appreciate you watching. Don't forget this week, get the kids off the couch. Get them out from in front of the computers and the TVs. Get them out into the great Texas outdoor zone. We'll see you next week.
<laughs> Make sure you get that big old belly there, son. Uh, get this on my we did it. We made it. Uh, you know, we went on that turkey hunt this spring and. Uh, oh, oh, crap. We got your free range axis deer <laughs> on the Dry Frio River. And 81 of them, folks. Thank you very much, Chris. No problem, man. All right. Did a great job. Nice shot. <laughs> on the Dry Frio River. Texas oh. Outdoor yeah, that's right. You're watching the Texas? <laughs> you guys can say like, yeah, yeah. good job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One more time.